Hello again, I'm John, and I want to welcome you to our third video on Bible study in our Enriching Sabbath School series. If you've never studied the history of our Seventh-day Adventist Church, you're missing out, because page after page and chapter after chapter reveal how powerful the Word of God is in the formation of our church. In fact, I think we often have this picture of God spoon-feeding our pioneers through revelations. But the truth is, God never revealed a new understanding until the pioneers had spent hours on their knees with the Word of God. Words can't even do justice to what it must have felt like to be in the circle of those Bible students. I imagine them studying so much, so passionately, so intensely, that meals are being forgotten, confessions are being made, tears are being wept, calls and cries out to God are being heard. You see, the truth is, any way you look at it, the pioneers possessed a hunger, a deep hunger, for the Word of God. Our topic for this segment is Bible study, the time each Sabbath devoted to small groups of Christians gathering together for spiritual nourishment and edification. With hopes of our church members becoming more and more involved in Bible study, we tried to pull together a few of our best ideas. I would think that, that one thing a Sabbath school teacher could do to improve Bible study time would be to try uh, every week to do something different or new, to not get in a rut. There are so many different learning styles for, for different people and, and different things reach different people and so if, if you get in one rut certain people won't be met and so to, to try different uh, avenues or, or, or different ways of learning I think would be a really great help for Sabbath school teachers. Um, I think the Sabbath school teacher needs to constantly change group sizes. In a lot of churches in Sabbath school there's big groups and the shy kids don't get to say what they want to or there's some kids that dominate the conversation so if you break them up into smaller groups or just different size groups every week then everyone will get a chance to contribute to the Sabbath school class. Well instead of the leader doing all the talking they should facilitate more and let the group members talk more to get them more involved you know so I always enjoy when leaders do that. Most of the people are visible learners and so it's very important for the Sabbath school teacher to use flip charts, pictures or something like that or just to stop a moment in lecturing and to encourage the group to make notes and to share the notes with each other and I think it's very important. Probably one thing that they could do is really have a study from the Bible so we can focus on text, uh, promise, stumbling blocks to avoid, examples in the Bible about how we should live our daily lives. Instead of summarizing everything in the quarterly, I think a teacher should pick two or three points and just expound on those. Oh, this has been a personal burden of mine. I think one way that they can make it a little bit more exciting is if they make it personal. A lot of times they ask, what does the Bible say, instead of what does the Bible say for me personally. And I think a lot of our members need to understand what the Bible says for their individual and personal lives. I think it would be better for them to use a Sabbath school lesson as a tool instead of a crutch and use the Bible more and their own outline, which is in their own words. It's more thought-provoking that way. We're very happy to include the General Conference Sabbath School Department. They're the ones who produce the lesson quarterlies and all the Sabbath School helps. We ask them to share with us their ideas, their resources, their dreams, their inspirations, anything that might help us to improve the quality of our Sabbath School throughout our church. People often ask why it is that we have what's called a world curriculum or that people study the same topic every Sabbath around the world. There's a number of reasons for that. First of all, the integrity of the church's belief system. These Bible study guides teach what the church teaches and in that sense they are official documents that are published by the administrative committee of the General Conference. Secondly, there's a preparation process. From all around the world, people have input into these materials, and they have their say in what come, how that topic is developed. Not only that, but most people really want it that way. The Worldwide Adult Sabbath School has four broad audiences. Has new members that number in the millions, long-term Sabbath School members who faithfully study their Bible study guides on a regular basis, and Adventists who grow up in the church and often ask the question, why are we studying this again? There are also those with an academic background who have the resources to amplify and enhance any topic that's presented. There's already many options available within a given topic. You know, you, you, you have the student edition, you have a teacher's edition, you have an easy reading edition, you have an abridged edition. 
And these materials are readily available for anyone who wants to use them. In fact, if you don't know where to get the materials, talk with your pastor or with your conference or mission Sabbath school director, and they can tell you where to get these different editions. The study of God's Word is more meaningful when teachers plan their presentation around objectives. Some general objectives are uphold Christ. Plan by asking, will this question or comment help my students grow in Him? Make the study practical. Help the students understand how they can apply what they have learned. More specific objectives center around the lesson topic. Concentrate on two or three points in the lesson. Decide how you want your students to grow as a result. Make sure your comments and questions relate to the points you choose and will help your students grow. A teacher also should tailor very specific objectives to meet the needs of individual class members. Use the following framework to formulate all objectives. As a result of this learning experience, I want my students to know, feel, respond. For example, if you're studying intercessory prayer, you can say, I want my students to know that intercessory prayer involves praying for the needs of a person, feel the need to pray for other people, and respond by praying on a daily basis for the needs of the people they love. May God bless you as you strive to make your presentations more meaningful. Well, my big hope and prayer with the Bible study guide is that each day when somebody opens the Bible study guide, they'll be studying their Bible. I mean, the Bible is the Word. This is the source of our knowledge of God. It's the source of our knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's the source of our knowledge of salvation. In other words, what do we have? We live in a world and we see it ends in death. But through the Word, through the written Word, this revelation of God, we're given hope, we're given promise, and that comes from the Bible. So I want the people to be studying the Bible. And I'm hopeful each day they'll come away with some knowledge of scripture, something of the point that we've looked at, but even more than just some kind of head knowledge and some, some theology that they know, that they'll be able to come away with something from the word that can impact them in their daily life, impact them in their walk with the Lord, impact them with the people that they inevitably meet. And so our goal is not just to get them in the Bible to study the Bible per se, but or to get them in the Bible so they can learn some theology and know more theology, which is fine and that has their place. But our biggest concern is that they read the word study each day clear lessons precise lessons that give them give them things that they can learn and then from that be able to take it and use it in a practical sense in their daily walk with the lord and in the inevitable contact they have with the people whomever they come in contact with that's our number one goal with the bible study guide sometimes a member of our world church will express an idea that on the surface seems to make a great deal of sense they ask in our Sabbath school lessons, why don't we just study about the life and character of Jesus? Leave all this hair-splitting theology and doctrine to the experts. If we set out to study Jesus' life and character, to observe his teachings as a model for our lives, one of the first things we notice is that he himself was a careful student of Scripture. In meeting temptation in the wilderness, he referred to the book of Deuteronomy. When the Pharisees criticized him for consorting with tax collectors and sinners, he quoted the prophet Hosea. He explained John the Baptist's ministry by quoting Malachi. He based his ministry on scripture, answered his critics with it, and admonished his hearers to trust in it. If you abide in my word, he says, you are my disciples indeed. Who I vote for in the next election should be based on my reading of scripture. My response to an issue of public debate or a popular shift in thinking should stem from my study of biblical principles. Else how can I honestly proclaim as the psalmist, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The picture of Sabbath schools depicted by the general conference leaders is the way I imagined Sabbath schools back in the days of the pioneers, where people take seriously their responsibility of studying the word of God, and they're passionately seeking to experience him more and more. Unfortunately, we have Sabbath schools all around the world where people are just going through the motions, it looks like, where they come not really expecting to learn anything new. It's my prayer for this church that we might have a revival, a renewed interest in the Word of God, that we might truly be the church that we claim to be, a people of the Word.